Good morning, Saints. I'm actually in my small gym because I'm getting ready to work out. There's something I need to talk to you about. And hopefully I can keep this under 10 minutes. Um, anyway, the reason that I have to talk to you is because, first of all, about four Genesis, or five days ago, chapter seven. I had my scriptures playing in the back. And the Lord Hang said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, about five days ago, I had a dream that I was talking to a young lady, and she was in Saudi Arabia. Why Saudi Arabia? I don't know, but it looks so real. Just the way the dream was, the smell, everything. And behind her was this giant mosque. So I was telling her, so I said, so what are you doing in Saudi Arabia? She said she's on vacation. And then I said, so what about... So I said, what about... Um, I said, what about all of the other... And then the woman, she looked, she had a ponytail and stuff like that. Like a Saudi woman, you know. And she looked, uh, well, like a Saudi woman. And then I said, so you're on vacation? And she said, yeah, something like that. And then I said, where are you going next? She said, well, I'm going to spread to the other lands, right? She said she was going to Syria. So she said... And it didn't make any sense to me. Just she was going to Syria. Well, she was going to Turkey first. And then she was going to go to Syria. And then, after that, she was going to go to... It. And then I said, when are you going to Israel? And then she said something about they plan on going, but it's not time yet. So I'm thinking to myself... And then the dream looks so real. Like, I could see the mosque. I could see the Saudi desert. And behind this woman, there was a huge uh, army. And it was Saudi soldiers because in the dream they had gray and white like fatigues. And I think there was some blue in there. And if you look at the Saudis' uh, fatigues, okay, if you look at their fatigues now, it looks exactly the same. I knew it was Saudi soldiers. So I woke up from the dream and then it shifted into another dream where there was a giant mosque and it was Saudi Arabia, but there was other mosques too. Each mosque had a uh, a country's flag, United States, China, Russia, Iran, you name it, and they were all coming up against Israel, and Saudi Arabia was there, and the dream ended. Well, that dream about all the nations coming up against Saudi Arabia, that means that all of the Islamic nations, Islam would be a dominant religion, all of the Islamic nations will rise up against Israel, but you know it's prophesied in Joel chapter 2, this is going to happen in the latter days, and that Jesus was going to destroy all the Islamic nations, all nations that come up against Israel, Jesus was going to destroy them, and Jesus is going to destroy Islam, period. So that's what that second dream meant. The first dream, I had to sit here and think about it, and I prayed, I spent the last five days praying before I was going to upload this dream to you, because be honest with you, I had it, it, it wasn't five days ago, it was nine days ago, like almost two weeks ago I had it, and I had to sit here and wonder, what did this dream mean? So, the soldiers in this, in the, in this dream represent the Saudi army, the woman in the dream represents the nation of Saudi Arabia. You notice how in the Bible the Lord always references a, a nation as she, like, um, I'll give you an example, that the Lord is going to destroy Babylon and her armies, or the Lord is going to send up a nation against another nation. I'll give you an example. That nation was um, Israel in the, in, uh, it was in the book of Exodus and, and Joshua and Judges, all over scripture, right? And how the Lord said that he was going to desolate her lands. So the Lord always references that nation in a, in a female context, like a female gender. Okay? Africa is referred to as the motherland, right? 
brush is referred to as some other lines. You see where I'm going with this? So I believe that that Saudi woman represented Saudi Arabia. I think that the soldiers represented Saudi's army. And I think when she said that we're heading to Turkey, we're going to Turkey first and we're going to Syria, I think that she was talking about, oh, she said we're going to Turkey. We're going to see our brothers and sisters in Turkey, she said. We're going to see our brothers and sisters in Turkey, our brethren in Turkey. Then we'll go into Syria. That meant that they're going to invade Syria. That Saudi Arabia and Turkey are going to invade Syria. And um, so I'm going to back up for a minute. Again, I think that that meant what she was saying was that Saudi Arabia was going to go to Turkey and help Turkey and form like some type of uh, some type of coalition where Saudi's going to lead that coalition and invade Turkey. Some type of uh, campaign and they, I'm not sorry, not invade Turkey. They we're going to form some type of campaign and invade Syria. Now, the reason why I say that again is because you have the Saudi armies. No, it's countless, countless, countless armies behind this woman. Okay. And I believe that she represented the nation of Saudi Arabia. I believe that the giant mosque, one of the big, biggest mosques I've ever seen, represented this Islamic nation of Saudi Arabia as well. Represented Islam and Saudi Arabia. And I believe when she said that, that, she was going, that she was going to visit her brothers and sisters in Turkey, meant the Muslim nation of Turkey, and that they were going to plan a campaign against Syria. Like Turkey and Saudi Arabia were going to get together and plan a campaign against Syria. In other words, plan to invade Syria. In the dream, when I asked about uh, when I asked about um, Israel, she said she said uh, they plan on visiting Israel, but it wasn't the time yet. So, in other words. Saudi Arabia plans on invading Israel eventually along with Turkey and various other nations. You know that many nations are rising against Israel now. Now, why are you asking me if I'm telling you this? Because I believe it was a prophetic dream that Jesus Christ was telling me. I, I had this dream two weeks ago. Now, if you look in the news, Saudi Arabia and Turkey are planning to invade Syria. It is prophetic. I believe the Lord was showing me a prophetic dream. They're planning to invade Syria. That's what they're planning on doing. And eventually, in the last days, Saudi Arabia, Russia, and various other nations will rise up against Israel. And the Lord will destroy them. Okay? But, that's going to be in the latter days. But I believe that the dream that I'm telling you is actually unfolding regarding Syria getting invaded by Turkey and Saudi Arabia. Now, take into consideration, ladies and gentlemen, that Turkey is a member of NATO. Okay? Take that into consideration. Serious consideration. Turkey is a member of NATO. If Turkey and Saudi Arabia invade Syria, Russia is not going to sit there and take it. Russia is going to stop Syria and, um, I'm sorry, Turkey and Saudi Arabia, they're going to jump in and stop them or try to stop them. If Russia does that, you know that NATO is going to come into, um, to the aid of Turkey because they're a NATO member, which means the United States and her allies are going to be dragged into this war. Why are you asking me if I'm telling you this information? Is because, ladies and gentlemen, I have reason to believe that this would be the beginning, the beginning of the battle of Gog and Magog as prophesied in Ezekiel 38 and 39. Now, let me tell you something. You're probably saying, okay, isn't that war supposed to happen during the tribulation or whatever? Here's what I think. Okay? And again, I'm not saying this is fact. The Great War is going to happen. That is World War III, period. 
I believe Ezekiel 38 and 39, the, the worst part of the war, will happen during the tribulation. That's what I believe. Now, I'm going to make something very clear to you guys. I am not telling you people that we are in the tribulation because we are not. I've already told you people that Ezekiel, I'm um, sorry, the Daniel 9, 27 prophecy, once that prophecy, the agreement with Israel of many nations is fulfilled, that will usher in the seven-year tribulation. Okay? Ezekiel 38, 39, the Great War, takes time to play out. So it could start out as a, a regular war. And then over the years, it'll just get worse. That's how it's going to play out. And that's what Jesus Christ told me. Now, what I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm going to say it again very clearly. We are not in the tribulation. One. Number two, the reason why I'm telling you that the Ezekiel 38, 39 prophecy is starting to play out and starting to form, because you got all the chess pieces in play, is because of the nations. The, the major players are already positioned. That's why I'm telling you that. All the pastors notice it too. Now, I'm telling you ladies and gentlemen that the Ezekiel 38 and 39, I told you that, that this is World War III. I already told you that. I said it was in the beginning stages. I told you that Ezekiel 38 and 39 has to do and is World War III that it is the Great War. World War III is the Great War. There's going to be two phases in that war. Okay? World War III overall is the Great War. Because it's going to, you know why it's called the Great War? Because many nations will be involved. It's going to be worse than World War I and World War II put together. And not only that, okay, um, the war will intensify in the latter days. And that, when I say intensify, the war, the war will be at its worst during the tribulation. Now, according to what I researched, it's supposed to be at its worst during the last three and a half years of the tribulation. Okay? So it's going to be worse, period, but it's going to be at its peak, its most worse, I believe, during the last part of the tribulation. So I just want to say that again. It's going to be at its worst during the last part of the tribulation. The last three and a half years of the tribulation is going to be at its worst. Now, ladies and gentlemen, now that I said that clearly to you, you know that Ezekiel 38 and 39 is World War III. It tells you how World War III is going to begin. So does, um, I told you about, I think it's Revelation chapter 9, you have to look it up yourself, about uh, great chariots around the Euphrates River, that's where Syria is. That also tells you about the war beginning as well. Psalms 83, Joel chapter 2. Tells you about World War III beginning. Tells you about how it begins and how it's going to end. So it's an event that's going to play out and it's going to be for years. It's going to be worse than World War I or World War II. Okay. Um, I believe, like I said, that prophetic dream I had, the Lord was telling me in that dream that Syria is going to be invaded by Turkey and Saudi Arabia. And here we are, we're facing that. And Saudi Arabia actually started forming their coalition with their nations, I believe, almost two weeks ago. It wasn't made official, but they started trying to get nations together. I believe they only have probably maybe 10 or 11. They're trying to gather 150 nations, but they only have 10 or 11. Look, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not here about trying to scare you. I'm not here about trying to make you feel uncomfortable. I'm not here to do any of that. What I'm telling you people as to what's going on, that this is reality. This is not something that you play with. Now, the Lord is using different people to confirm to you that World War III has ha ha is in effect. World War III has been here for at least the last two years. They just didn't tell you anything. What I'm telling you people so that you understand is that World War III has indeed been confirmed. It's not confirmed to tell you that it's starting today. That's to tell you people 
that World War III has been here, and the powers that be, meaning the elite, the governments and such, they don't want to tell you nothing. They want you to sit in the dark. You need to know this information. Um, I was debating on even uploading this video. I had to pray to the Father for at least almost two weeks before I even told you about this dream. Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm asking you people to do, for one, is to test the fruits, get your own confirmations from Jesus Christ. But if you look around you, the Muslim invasion and all that, I put up a video explaining that in detail yesterday. Um, that's how the spread of Islam is going to come about. It's spreading like wildfire. Okay? Islam is going to be the dominant religion for a time. You see that that prophecy is unfolding with all of these nations being invaded by Islam, Muslim immigrants, and what they're doing, and how they're demanding Sharia law. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not trying to scare you people. I was told by the Father, he gave me the go-ahead today to tell you about this revelation. Now, I'm going to leave some links below. I'm going to upload this video. I'm going to leave some links below. You may see the video uploaded first. The links will follow shortly after. I don't want you to be... This is your choice, but I don't want you to feel discouraged and wonder what is going to be your fate in the kingdom of God. Um, you guys got to stay strong. I told you you're going to see disturbing things. And in my last video, I told you not to let these events get to you. So, I'm about to wrap this broadcast up. I will leave supporting links below. I will leave the scriptures that I told you about below as well, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you will find, again, if the video uploads before, you can return back to my ministry, back to this channel, and look out for those links. They will be in the description box. Um, again, news articles and the scriptures that I told you about will be in the description box. Um, I had another dream last night. And I was standing in what looked like a Middle Eastern nation. I just don't know which one. Okay. Um, could have been any of them. I have a feeling it was Israel. The only why I say that is because I remember seeing the dome that's in Israel, and I remember seeing the Wailing Wall. I'm just standing there observing, and I see people running everywhere, and there was screaming, and there was men in different uniforms trying to accost them. It looked like Israel was invaded. That's what it looked like to me. So as always, please test the spirits and do not let this discourage you on your walk. Do not let these events scare you. You have to face the possibility. I've told you before many, many times you're going to see these events. These are perilous times prophesied by Jesus Christ. I've also told you that it's, you know, as a Christian, as a believer on this walk with the Lord, that it is very possible you may have to die for Jesus Christ. You may become a martyr. I told you that. I told you don't depend on the rapture to swift you out of here. In other words, to get you out of here. The Lord said all believers will suffer. Says it in his word. Remember? He said all believers will suffer. All believers will be persecuted as his prophets were. So, all I can tell you is, if you are facing a situation where you're being held a blade to your neck or a gun to your head, and you're being told to renounce Christ for either Islam or for whatever false faith or for whatever reason, you better be ready to give your life for Christ if you wish to gain your life in heaven. 